Hello everyone, welcome to the Professional iOS Engineering Season 2. I'm Mike. And I'm Caio. And in the first season, we wrote a quiz app from scratch, following TDD and modular design. So following good design principles. In the second season, you learn how to extend the code base with TDD as we refactor our modules to improve reusability and composability while maintaining backwards compatibility. So the idea is to show how to make changes to a module without breaking clients. So we're going to be performing big refactorings, small refactorings, and changing the design of the system while maintaining backwards compatibility. And we can rely on our tests to make sure that we didn't break the functionality. That's it. So we are pretty happy with our first design iteration. The code is well separated. We have the UI layer that depends on the presentation layer. And no other module depends on the UI or presentation, which means we can completely replace the user interface without changing any other module. Moreover, we separated the routing responsibility from the rest of the modules as well so we can easily change how we present the user interface to our clients. And we have the quiz engine, which does not depend on any other module. It's completely decoupled from the other modules, which means it can be reused in other platforms even. We could reuse exactly the same engine for macOS applications, watchOS applications, iPadOS applications, and etc. That's right. It is platform independent. And finally, we have the most concrete module, main, our composition root, that instantiates the object graph, composes them, and launches the application. So we're pretty happy with this separation, but throughout Season 1, we raised some details that can be improved. Right. And one issue raised was the current router protocol. Its name was leaking implementation details. Right, because a router is normally an implementation. So maybe we can improve this and find a better name. And the other issue we raised is that the result model that lives in the engine is coupled with a specific game type, a scored game type. So currently, our quiz engine is coupled with a specific way of scoring the game. But we want this engine to be reusable for different types of games. So ideally, we should create a way to inject a scoring function in the engine rather than coupling the engine with a specific scoring system. Thus, we allow clients of this framework to easily add new ways of scoring the game or even not scoring at all. Maybe right. they want to implement a survey like quiz that at the end there is no score so this makes the engine very generic yes we want the engine to be very generic and not coupled with specific quiz games and the first iteration that was fine because we have only one game but as we keep developing more features in this application our design should become more reusable and more generic easier to extend right and we want to introduce all those changes without breaking existing clients. So that means that we want to maintain backwards compatibility at all times. And that is the biggest challenge. Mm -hmm. Because renaming a protocol is easy. But right. how can you rename a protocol without breaking clients? Yes. That's the solution we're going to have to find. And again, the good thing is that we developed those modules following TDD. So we have tests we trust. So that's it. Initial goals. Let's find a way of renaming the router without breaking the clients. And then finding a way of decoupling the quiz engine from specific game types. Awesome. So let's go. Okay, Mike, it's time to start. Yes. The goal is to rename the router protocol without breaking clients of the framework. And to do so, we'll follow a very disciplined approach, doing one thing at a time. Very tiny steps. So our first step, let's create a branch. Rename router. 
And in this repo, we have all of the modules. Yeah, we need to focus on the engine right now. There it is. Run the tests. It's passing. Perfect. Let's find our router. So here we have the infamous router. And we want to rename it. The problem is that if we just rename it to router new, whatever, it's going to break all the clients. Yes. Well, break this framework and uh, all the clients that use this framework. Exactly. So we need to follow some sort of procedure to make sure that we can migrate this framework without breaking anything. Exactly. We also don't want to break the whole framework here, right? We want to do it in steps. So we have a more productive process. Perfect. So we cannot just rename something, that's for sure. And yes. since we want to be backward compatible, we probably need to create a new thing. Right. And then little by little, we replace it. Yes. We need to find a way to do it step by step and make sure that we don't break anything whilst we're doing that. Right. So I think the way to start is to deprecate this. Exactly. And I think that's a, a nice way for the clients as well to be notified for our changes and give them the opportunity to migrate whilst they don't lose any functionality in their current code bases. Yeah, so let's give it a try. So to deprecate something, we can use the availability notation. Right. So let's say it's deprecated for all versions. So let's see. It's still functional, right? Mm -hmm. We just get some warnings, which is much better. So before we move forward, I think we can even give a message as to what the client should do since this is deprecated. However, we don't know exactly what we're going to call the new protocol. So maybe we can store the action in a to-do list so we don't forget later. This is part of the process. Things we have to do and we don't want to do them exactly at this point, we put it in a list so we don't forget it. Yes. So at some point we are going to put a nice message in there. So add deprecated message router protocol. And now we can move on. Exactly. So why don't we commit here? That's the first step. Yep, I like that. We are in a separate branch. No problem. So we created the router protocol. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we want to create a new protocol. It's exactly the same, just a new name. Yes. So this router basically was used by the quiz engine's flow to delegate the handling of the next question and the handling of the result. Right. So I feel that the name delegate following as well the COCO conventions is a good candidate. So you mentioned the flow. Right. And we can make it a flow delegate. For example. Yes, that's a possible candidate. However, the flow is an internal type to this quiz engine, right? And the protocol, of course, it's public because it needs to be implemented by the clients of this framework. Yes, exactly. So the flow is a type that no one outside this module knows about. So it will be a leak to call it a flow delegate. Yes. It's exposing some internal behavior. Yes, exactly. So perhaps quiz delegate might be a suitable name here instead of flow where it exposes the internal behavior. So we can call it quiz game delegate or just quiz delegate. What about the game? Is it a game? Well, although the app itself, it was built with intention of being a game, this quiz engine has nothing to do with a game domain. So it's, it's just a quiz. You know, if you're going to gamify the quiz into a new app, this is up to the developer, I believe. This is a framework, you know, it doesn't have to be very specific to the intent of the application. So, personally, I like Quiz Delegate. Okay, let's go with it. Nice. Quiz Delegate. And we pretty much want exactly the same thing there, right? Right. But then we have to change the route too to something. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, handle. Handle question, yeah. I know it's, again, it seems very generic, but that's what it does. It handles the question and then it handles the result. and. It's up to the client to specify how it's going to be handled based on the delivery mechanism and based on the whole user experience that the developer wants to give to their customers. Okay, so that makes sense to call it handle. But another question just came to my mind now. We have a generic 
associated type question and answer. Right. But then we have this result type that is pretty much concrete. Is this what we want? So this result is pretty much for a game because it has even a score. And because of this concrete type, we also need to force the question to be hashable because it's a key to a dictionary, which looks weird to me to make this demand in here. Mm -hmm. So you're suggesting that the result, instead of being a concrete type, can be an associated type as well? Yeah. Then we can remove this hashable constraint. I remember we talked about this in previous videos. Right. There was a bit of a leak implementation here. Yes. So since we are making this refactory and we're going to introduce a new API, maybe it's time to do it? Yeah, I like that. Okay, so let's remove this type constraint, hashable. Let's add our associated type result. Now we can use result here. And let's call it handle. Okay. Does it look good for the new API? My only concern is that maybe we should uh, migrate first the router protocol exactly as it is, just by changing the names. And perhaps then we can start changing the result type, for instance, and making it more generic. I'm not sure how uh, more complex will make the whole process. Well, I think you have a good point. Why don't we keep as is and we add to the checklist. Mm -hmm. Remove hashable constraint from question and make the result type generic. Okay. And we can think if we want to do this in the future. Right. Okay. So let me undo the changes here. Let's just rename this to handle. I think that's enough. We are renaming the protocol and the methods. Yes. Everything else is the same. And we have something to checklist. Are we happy to go with this for now? Yep. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Let's commit. Okay, so introduce the nil quiz delegate protocol. It will replace the router protocol. Great. Perfect timing. Our first tomato is done. Again, it doesn't seem we did many things, but I think it's a good starting point just to make sure we got the names. Well, I don't know if we got them right, but definitely it seems like an improvement to me. And I think we showed a lot of discipline by not introducing the new generic result associated type and making sure we're changing the names first, making sure everything works. And then we can introduce this new behavior, which basically is not behavior, but uh, the compiler is extremely opinionated. So I'm sure we're going to have a rough time um, replacing that. Yeah, that makes sense to me. And it's always good to think before you type, you know, <laughs> and we are planning here. Yes. Next episode, let's make it work. Absolutely. Okay, to the next one. Bye all.